Alara, it's such an honor to welcome you to the Soul Collective. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me and I'm super excited to share with you and your community. Yeah, we've been talking offline and just, you know, such wealth of information coming through and I'm just excited to dive into this conversation. I feel there's so much at this time to tap into and we're going to be kind of exploring the energy that you're seeing and feeling of, of 2024 um, and really just kind of insights to help um, us, you know, navigate the energies of this time. But I'd love to ask you and kind of start by um, I know your journey began, um, well, you know, you spent um, some time in the banking industry, and I'd love to hear, you know, your path and evolution to really doing the work that you're doing now. Yeah, sure. So I was in finance for 22 years between London and New York, and um, it wasn't something that, you know, my lineage was part of. It wasn't something that I was destined to work in. Um, but the money system has soul roots for me, which I later discovered. You, you, at a soul level, will choose your training. You know, you will go into certain places and you will uh, learn certain things because that's part of your kind of soul evolution, these tools and these skills. Um, and yeah, so my situation with coming to where I am now really was a big turning point when I, I think it was 2008, so we're about to go through a you know, banking crisis. Um, I had kind of put my spiritual side, uh, locked it away. It was in the closet, really. And although I'd had two near-death experiences as a child, age two and four, they'd blown me wide open. And they'd already kind of had me connected in the sense that one of them was a drowning or near drowning, and I was forced back in the body. And I remember being like a choice. You know, I remember a choice of going back in. And as a child, knowing that, you know, you share too much or you're getting premonitions about things and and that scared people. So it kind of goes back in the closet. But I always stayed very connected to nature and we lived in the forest. We lived in the sea. So I was always very connected elementally. And um, I also had an older like a neighbor that basically really taught me kind of like herbalism and those kind of more root work stuff. Um, and yeah, my lineage has a magical, it's very ancient lineage. So I've kind of gone through like the past life stuff of clearing up like 48 generations back connections into the UK land. So I kind of came with that. And then at 18 had a, a death threat and I had to leave the home and I had to basically start again, like safe, move away from the home, find a path. And I found myself in a call center, basically no experience um, doing sales. And then it led me a year later to get a job for JP Morgan. So I ended up in an investment bank. So I went from literally being homeless, knowing I needed to get out. And then literally two years later being in JP Morgan. And to me, that was like this amazing opportunity because I had all of this support. I had money to be able to live on my own and, and opportunity. It allowed me to have a level of growth. Um, the role that I went into, I was 10 years younger than the youngest person in the department um, and there weren't many women doing these jobs. So I was really in this like male dominated world. It was very uh, US centric bank, um, but I saw the opportunity and it also allowed me at that time to be in London. So I was going and doing these client visits and these meetings with people and I was like 19 or 20. And then later on, I, I went and did a project in New York before permanently moving to London. So for me, I saw the opportunity, but I also saw the discrimination because I was so young doing the job I was doing. But it was like this opportunity to kind of grow and yeah, thrive. I saw it as an opportunity that I had. To, if I was very masculine, you know, doing, there was this kind of thing of, I could push the boundaries and essentially get promoted or moved or, or pay rise or whatever else. And it really taught me as well um, to negotiate my worth, knowing that men will happily always go for the upper end of like grade scales and stuff. So it really gave me all these skills for like standing up for myself and sort of fighting for my worth. But the words fighting, it wasn't with ease. And, you know, there weren't many women in that environment. So yes, it's being a pioneer through my 20s and thank God it gave me like financial security. 
but I knew from like my mid twenties, I was like, I had a bit of a weird thing when I was about 25 and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really 30 and what's going on. And like, I am not where I'm meant to be. And I used to read all these books when I was on holiday and there'd be these people that have gone through these really awful things and they've transformed their lives and they've created something amazing out of it. And I thought, I've got books in me. I know I've got, I've got a big story to tell, but I didn't feel at 25 I had the experience to really help anyone. No one would listen to me because I was already coming up against that in the bank. Um, and then it got to about 28, and they say it's like Saturn return around 27. And I had this massive year of moving jobs, different company, got engaged in New York. Then my grandmother died. And then I had all of these like epiphanies happening. It was as though everything that was being kind of hidden from me, it was being revealed. And that meant that I got to a point, I think it was just just before Christmas, and I had this massive like epiphany wake up dream where I heard my name being shouted. And then I saw the timeline of if I stay and marry this person, what will happen? And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be a widow at 40 with two children. And it was so visceral I felt it through my body I saw it I knew it and I just realized it was like there was so many knockings at the door of like you're ignoring how you're feeling you're not speaking your truth you're not you know there's not the communication isn't there you're not being seen in this relationship as you should be and um I knew I had to do something about it because our wedding was like six months away so had the conversation and suggested you know we're going to go for counseling or what have you um and he wasn't willing to see that there was a problem and wasn't willing to work at it. And I thought, well, I cannot stay in a situation where somebody is not willing to fight for it. So I had basically no decision. I was like, I have to leave. And that was really a big turning point whilst basically the most insecure time to leave a relationship at a financial crash whilst you are the last one in, therefore you're usually the last one out. At the time I had a psychopathic boss who was bullying us for like not working 12 hour days. And I knew in my heart, I just had to move because I would have been like trapped one way. And then, yeah, I just, I just really was a catalyst for the inner work because I then sought refuge knowing that if I went and got support through the bank, which they had like counseling support services, that at least I'd have, you know, something there to kind of get me through this next period. And that was then a year's worth of what was called uh, cognitive analytical therapy. And it really went into childhood development stuff and looking at why I'd chosen that relationship. There were addiction patterns. There were, you know, things that I had to overcome in myself, but also why had I stayed in that relationship so long? Why didn't I have those communication skills to, you know, explain how I felt and not feel that that needed to be the end of everything because I didn't grow up with them. So I kind of then realized at the end of that year that, how could I help someone else that had gone through a similar situation? And it then just led me to go back to uni. Then I retrained as a clinical hypnotherapist and a gestalt therapist while still in the bank. So I had this like fire inside of me and I was just learning all this stuff both about myself, but also the systems and patterns of how things worked at a psychological level. So very cognitive, but each time I was going deeper into the work, especially more of the subconscious uh, clinical side on the hypnotherapy stuff I realized how powerful uh, our subconscious is and, and this deeper level of healing that I'd not got from just doing the counseling so it was as though I was taken through one level and then I was kind of going deeper um, I was still in the bank that I saw the bank as my angel investor because I could still you know support myself support this new venture that I had and I was growing so it meant for me as well, you know, the partying stopped. I stopped drinking because you can't really be studying and kind of doing all of this inner work while still holding these kind of addictive patterns. And I was like, well, how can I be authentic if I was to help someone with addictions, if I'm still running those patterns myself? So it kind of was like this big refinement. And um, nobody in the bank knew at that time. Uh, other than maybe a couple of people. And I just kind of ran this parallel life almost whilst there. And it was really knowing that I had this, there was going to be something at the end of it, didn't know what it was going to be, that kept me going. And then I had my test, as I call it, which was the psychopathic boss, um, basically whistleblowing and getting out of the bank. So it was kind of this, 
I remember this final meeting and he sat there with his arms up like this with sweat patches saying, there's something that's changed in you and I can't put my finger on it. Something's changed. And I'm like, yes, I've changed energetically and I'm not frightened of you. You know, like inside I had shifted myself and he could feel it because it's almost like a predator. They can feel the weakness, you know, so that changed and then everything moved very quickly. Um, and I, I moved roles again. I ended up with a female boss doing exactly the same thing. So I was really like tested by the universe of all of these, you know, things I'd been trained on. It was like, right, now you need to existential learning time. And that was really like, how do you, I call it the workplace family constellation, because you realize like you are attracting in these people you work with, that, that boss, that colleague, whatever else, because they are orchestrated at a karmic level but also energetically they are gonna they're gonna show you something in yourself and it's about you know can you kind of hold your own and know what's yours and what isn't yours whilst navigating often quite a lot of dysfunction because a lot of these banks work on the fact that you know you you if you've got a frequency of fear you're going to attract people that their nervous system feels normal to be operating in fight or flight so you've got underlying trauma so when I began to start seeing all of this stuff, I was like, wow, it's like lids being lifted, still not really knowing quite where this was all going. And then in 2015, I moved banks and then I injured myself, like some really bad injuries. And it was really like a, a hip injury. I was training for a marathon and then I ended up in recovery, tearing three ligaments and pulling the bone off the ankle. It was like really like something is trying to stop me. And by the end of that month, went away to Gran Canaria and it was like the soul kicked in. I'd actually, on that land is Atlantean land. And when I went onto that land unknowingly, I'd actually activated a past life and a soul aspect had been integrated back in. So I kind of went there the first night, which I now remember was actually a winter solstice. Drinking with my friend would have been quite normal to the next day being like, I'm never going to drink again. And actually, I don't want to eat meat, fish. I don't want dairy. I kind of went vegan and teetotal overnight. So my friend was like, who is this person? The third day I went to the spa and had like an energy healing thing. Bear in mind, I'm on crutches and hobbling about. And by the end of the trip, I was off pain relief and I was off the crutches. And I was like, what is this? What is going on? Like, And I was getting loads of downloads of stuff. And that really set me off on here's another dimensional layer of like where I'm meant to be exploring. And mm. I've been told I'd be on crutches and hobbling about for nine months. I'm like, I'm not accepting that. And really when I kind of then decided that I wasn't going to accept somebody else's kind of belief systems, really, it then allowed me to expand. And that was then a big fast track. So mm. all of this was happening whilst I was in the bank, going through these constant like rebirths. Um, after that period, I'd met a twin flame. So I had this sexual feminine awakening happen, 300 past lives kick off. And then I was in the initiation of how do you integrate that level of karma, trauma, past life stuff, galactic past lives as well, whilst keeping your feet on the ground on the sales and trading floor of a global investment bank. And that was my next test. And that went on for about 18 months. And then it was this big, well, I was in the bath and I got the download of you need to go in on Monday and get approval to set your business up because you had to let them know if you've got outside interests. And on the Monday I went in, I told my boss, female boss that I got really well with. She signed it off literally within an hour. A week later, she left that role. So if that had not, if I'd not followed that guidance and done that, I probably would not have been able to run the business or set the business up. Mm. So it was like this synchronicity of like, yeah. And then that was your the intuition next, and yeah, it was like these, these streams and it wasn't necessarily, you know, I think we have many lives within one um, and, you know, many people aren't going to be navigating their corporate jobs or their mum experience or whatever else whilst expanding their consciousness. And yeah, I really had the, how do you keep your feet on the ground grounded whilst you are literally flying high into you know, all the all realms, basically. And it was this big thing of you cannot hide these other parts of yourself. They need to come out and you need to be yourself whilst you're here or you're going to get moved. 
Yeah. So I would have my crystals on the desk. I used to make all these sprays up and I was doing like soul healings for, you know, different traders and stuff on the floor. And and I remember saying to my boss, like, if I cannot be fully myself whilst here, my teams will move me. And he was more worried that basically they'd have to find a replacement and they'd lose the client relationships. So I kind of had to be this like pioneer of just allowing myself to be seen for all of these other parts of self mm. in an environment that doesn't normally encourage that and thankfully had quite a diverse team. So I feel that that is really where we are fast forward now. It's not necessarily leaving the organization. It's like what would happen to the organization if we allowed ourselves to actually be more of who we uniquely are, not trying to fix and make everybody the same. How would that bring innovation and you know self-discovery and more you know, empathy and development in these organizations that need to be rebirthed because we're bringing what we've already rebirthed within ourselves out into the world of where we are day to day. Mm. And it's like that is kind of what I feel with a lot of my kind of journey before I left was really for this time. It's like, well, how do you navigate these awakenings? 30 years ago, people would have been sectioned because they just wouldn't know what was you know, psychically going on, you'd be classed as bonkers. But now this is, you know, it's us really switching on what is our our natural gift, our birthright gift. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. Like there's so many facets of, of your journey. And I feel like, you know, so many of us can relate to in different ways because it is, it's a journey. There's so many twists and turns. And, you know, what it really brought up for me in your sharing is, you know, just that life shows us, you know, it, it is a mirror, you know, and sometimes we feel like, oh, relationships, like romantic relationships will mirror and meet us where we are energetically and help us to, you know, work through maybe patterns that are wanting to be released. But really all of life does that, you know, business does that, our romantic relationships do that. And, you know, I feel like some some of us on an awakening journey can sometimes have that initial feeling of discomfort of like, I'm not, you know, you mentioned, you know, I know there's books inside of me that I meant to write and share. I know there's something more. And there can be this feeling of like, this is not it, you know, whatever it is, right? And we tend to want to like run to the next thing, but there's such medicine in the journey in the evolution, you know, and you mentioned these tests that you navigated and went on and, you know, also people that you kind of met along the way that were kind of mirroring to you energetically things that needed to be resolved and released in order for you to step into the fullness of who you are. So I love that about your journey. Something that you said in the very beginning that I was curious about was, you mentioned that money was connected to your lineage. What um, what did you mean by that? Oh, um, uh, not money to the lineage. Meaning, I wasn't connected to a family where we all went to. We were all in finance or anything. So there was, it was there was no actual connection. So for gotcha. me to, you know, I kind of was always somebody that I loved like drama studies and stuff so I had like I, I kind of at home had one relationship it was quite a toxic family environment where if we want to look at like scapegoat that dynamic there was a lot of like mental physical spiritual abuse going on so my escape was really at school or you know going and doing my activities because they would actually see me and mirror back something else of me so I gained this you know level of identity so I say that we always have like angels no matter how bad things are at different points, like the lady that lived next door that helped me cook and taught me herbalism, that's an angel that I'd lined up to show me some level of like, you know, kindness that I deeply needed at that time mm. in my childhood that I certainly wasn't getting at home. And it allowed me to not accept their version of who they believed me to be through their projections and their distortion. And it gave me an out to build some energy and faith in that and also the fact it gave me a lot of confidence because I had to kind of do everything myself I wasn't being like you know groomed and helped and supported it was really like you have to put yourself out there and you know be confident and be yourself mm -hmm. so going into my first job I was used to doing that so picking up a phone and selling things was like easy peasy you know you were, you kind of were in a work environment you were safe it was chatting to lots of people I'm curious about people 
and um yeah I found it quite easy so it was like kind of I'd almost been honed on these skills with part-time jobs and put myself out there for that job which then put me into a client service role which was quite rare at like 19 for the bank mm. so when I look back now and think my gosh like a 19 year old in with an investment manager actually leading uh reviews I mean it's bonkers but you know they they opened doors they gave me a, you know training and I was able to prove myself so you know that I think is quite pivotal because I don't think that happens necessarily certainly for a 19 year old now so you know I I'm really grateful for those opportunities and those people that were able to see something in me that maybe I hadn't seen in myself or it hadn't come to blossom yet um, and I think that's also a big thing that's really important with industry now is like you know with this sisterhood wound and stuff women need to open doors for other women you know like that 20 years of me going in and doing these things that others weren't opening doors for that's why it's really important that we break that cycle and we make it easier for others men mm. and women and everybody really um but I think that going through that experience seeing the discrimination but also the kindness on the other side means yeah. you don't black and white it it's like we line up these different people to kind of show us contrast, which then shows, will I blanket everybody as bad because of my family? No, because I trust that there's something else out there. And I also trusted, I knew, I knew very early on that there were two paths. If I had allowed myself to generate the energy and I'd projected that to somebody because out of pain, that could have caused I knew it would have caused something, something bad would have happened. And I yeah. knew that that wasn't my path from such an early age. And really a lot of my kind of psychic abilities, my channeling, my guides and all the rest of it, that was kind of keeping me safe. So yeah. I was not looking to get into the dramatics and the, the other side. I was really just wanting to try and keep myself moving forward, you know, and happy. And I think that, you know, these these work environments, I don't think they're all doom and gloom. I just think that they are ready for their rebirth. Mm. Yeah, that, that deeply resonates. And also there's so many sort of choice points, Alara, in your story that you've shared of it could go in this way or it can go in another direction and the courage to really step into your truth and you know what feels like your highest timeline really kind of rings true in your in your story. And speaking of timelines, I'd love to kind of move into 2024 and mm. The energy of this new year that we're emerging into and just how you see timelines unfolding and how we can really navigate our highest path and timeline. Yeah, so I think there's a few different layers to this. One is this year is going to be like the lots of shadow. Shadow has to be revealed because there's been a power distortion through all systems. And ultimately, many of us that have been doing the deeper shadow work, we know, we know it came in from Babylon, from Egypt, from Atlantis. Many of the people that I worked with in different industries, all I knew them from other timelines. So I started to look in and heal this stuff within myself, but I knew who the players were and I know they're out in all industries. So it's not that there's one bad industry and one not. It just means that there is a rebalance that's occurring. So in the first quarter of... Uh, next year 2024 the way i see it is that it's going to be uh, quite confronting in all of these different areas because shadow is going to come up and that's going to mean that in different industries whereby there's been a real pyramid kind of hierarchy set up there's going to be change and some of it is going to be a pr exercise because we can't have certain people that have done certain things um being seen to be leading these organizations and also it's going to bring about an opportunity for a reset um, and that really is the extremeness of how that plays out for the impact of everybody else depends on how much energy we put towards it and how much we also believe of what we're receiving because obviously we are co-creating so we're part of the collective field and part of our own timeline so if we are consuming everything from one news channel with one lens of perspective and we are engaged and we are feeding it it will create an impact to the collective field so being very very cautious I would say through January how much you are online and what you're consuming and what where the information is coming from 
it's not to say don't be online, but it's saying, okay, everything I'm consuming, my subconscious is taking in. It likely is has got fear resonators that I hold from this or other timelines. Um, if I'm being triggered excessively, then I need to look at what is the stimulus that's, you know, it's not just resetting constantly. It might also be about not consuming certain things that you now know are going to be pulling you off kilter because your frequency is lower and all you're focusing is on is one particular storyline, shall we say. So I would say people need to be energy clearing, like disconnecting mm -hmm. after using social media, pulling their energy back, um, recognizing that when you're opening it, it's, you know, if you were to view every app in your phone as a portal and that that is something that there is an energetic exchange, notice how, how am I disassociated after watching this stuff? Or am I, where am I in my body? How do I feel? Am I triggered? Am I you know, how am I feeling starting to connect back in? Because we naturally do disassociate when we're watching TV or film. So if we're really wanting to create something major, which we have these also very high vibrational energies coming in that we can really harness. If we've got almost dual timelines coming in where we are consuming one thing, which is lowering our frequency, putting our point of attraction on this, we're not able to put all our energy where we actually want to go to, so our true north. Mm. So it's all about know thyself but also know your habits your addictions and your uh need to distract mm. and that is showing you underneath there is something there that you're likely not listening to about your own unmet needs hungry angry lonely tired um mm. or am i just really not listening to what my soul wants do i need more time in nature do i need to be actually have i been sitting on the fence waiting for things to happen and now like it's almost like my soul is just you have to go it's going to be about coming back into self. It's going to be about also uh, connecting to the light. This is going to be a year where there is going to be a big questioning around our connection with source, point of origin, God. And what is that connection? Because that's going to be about how can I hold this light? And that is how you will be able to hold and generate a higher frequency and access a higher timeline. And it's part of the clearing really from if we say like the 3d to 5d it's really the lower three chakras are going to be everything that's collectively playing out next year mm -hmm. is going to be correlating to things in relation to that when we're looking at the bridge of the heart we're going into the multi-dimensionality we're going into uh beginning to understand the wider expansiveness of our what we connect into and quantum but that means also protecting our energy more because everything we're consuming we have to then process through the emotional the mental bodies so that will bring your frequency down. That will make you feel more tired. If you're surrounded by people that are really negative and just stuck in a loop, again, how much you consume of that energy, that, that frequency, that belief system is going to affect us. So it's not about avoiding everybody because <clears throat> you can't. It's about how do I navigate through life and be this pillar of kind of authentic self whilst others hold different viewpoints and belief systems and it's going to really be about resetting knowing what it feels like to feel good and in your body and connected to your soul and source because yeah. that becomes your default what you come back to and that's where your intuition is going to be because you're going to feel good in that kind of flow i often when i've got clients come to me they've often been trying to get guidance when they feel at their lowest and they're not clearing their energy first yeah. so they're doing it in an off kilter state because that's when they think, you know, I'm desperate, I need to get guidance. But everything's about us in relation to us. It's a relationship. So if I'm trying to get connection to something when I'm in fear, I'm going to be pulling in all sorts of nonsense for that information. So it's going to be about this thing of like, okay, it might seem like an initial inconvenience to start incorporating energy clearing, but actually how can I use this to my advantage? How can I see this as... Uh, maybe a reset between pitching at work means that I enter with the most vibrant version of myself. I'm more magnetic. My light is there. That is what people receive. That is the dominant energy in the room. Mm -hmm. That's going to shift how our outer reality responds to us. So we start to open up to more opportunities. There is more flow because we're taking control of our responsibility for ourselves and our kind of energy field. That in itself, more people doing that will, again, influence the collective timelines. So everything is, you know, feeding in 
Um, but it's, yeah, it's going to be about really knowing whether we are in our avoidance patterns or whether it is like, what I find is that so many people are being told who they should be. And if they want success, it's act like this and look like this online. We're going to be redefining success for ourselves. And that's a know thyself kind of pattern and exploration. Um, and I always say this to people, would you walk up to someone in the street and just ask them for financial advice? Probably not. So you would not necessarily do that online, but people do because we trust it. Mm. Would we ask a guide, a spiritual guide that we haven't really got a relationship with, that we haven't set up any kind of like boundaries, would we take financial advice off maybe a guide incarnation before? Probably not, but people do. Mm. So this is all about our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with the unseen, so the different levels of consciousness that are beginning to tap in and connect with us. Yeah. And more and more people that are also beginning to, you know, channel different galactic consciousness, et cetera. One of the really important things is also to uh, look at those lower three chakras because they're always going to be the lens that are going to block the clearest um, information coming through because we're doing it through our, the lens of our core woundings. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to ask you, Laura, with that, like, you know, if somebody is in awareness that their energy is maybe feeling a little bit depleted or lower, <clears throat> um, what are some simple techniques that you would recommend to clear your own energy? Yeah, um, I think one of the key things is recognizing that you are the elementals, you are the element. So being out on, you know, go outside and actually verbally speak start speaking to the element, start calling in the elements, you know, speak to, bless the, the ground, like literally speak to the water that you're showering with, activating and asking for the elementals to clear any lower frequencies. Salt bath, spiritual baths are like my kind of normal. Um, I use uh, energy clearing protocols that I've created um, for different things. So if I'm going into you know, workplace, I'm going to use something different because I know what's going on in that field and I know I'll need something different. Um, I have tools that take six minutes that you would listen to and they are, you know, removing any energy that isn't mine, any emotional energy that isn't mine and also any projections of others that get stuck in our field. Um, I'd be removing any kind of entities or plugins or any kind of things that I may have connected in with. Um, and I would also be flooding my field with different frequencies to raise my frequency again and making sure that I'm actually anchored into really that point, you know, that pillar of light. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm holding ceremony, then it's like Fort Knox, like I have multiple architecture levels set up to ensure that when somebody comes in, nothing that is of an interference level can even come into the space. So everything is set up as a energetic architecture, really. So mm -hmm. I'm working at different levels with the different types of work I do. And I think understanding if you are also, because I have a lot of healers that come to me and they are taking on their client stuff because mm -hmm. they that's part of the initiation is to understand some of this stuff as well. And knowing that we may have past timelines uh, that get activated, maybe as a shaman, for example, where you might have been processing energy through your body and known how to do it then. And now you're out there doing body work or you're working with people, but you don't realize that that code has been switched on and you're doing the same thing. You may be gaining weight. You might be getting weird dreams. You might be having weird things going on. And that is part of the initiation, really. We do have to do some of this, you know, timeline work to sometimes actually step into the fullest version of our, our light and our abilities. And that is really the initiation with the energetics as well. Um, because I feel that it's gone from the waft around with sage. That's kind of like not really enough. Um, I always recommend as well, um, clients that have children, you know, frankincense and myrrh, incense in a charcoal. They use that in churches. I have some extra stuff I add in with the incense stuff. Go around a room, clockwise, windows open, strip the bed if the kids are having nightmares. Um, reset your space your energetic space in your yes. home is really powerful especially if you're working at home as well mm -hmm. all of that influences how we feel so you know if, if your home is your like sacred space make sure that it's a strong foundation yeah. and you know when we're going through all these big changes and energetic shifts it's very very easy for our home to become kind of 
out of balance as well. Yeah. So it's almost about looking at all of these extensions because they all influence our own energetic state. Mm. Um, and I think being curious that I, I say like the eclectic woman is something I feel is really important because I pull in streams of information and um, wisdom really from different practices. And I think it is about making your own toolkit of rituals that work for you. Mm. Like when I was in the bank, I would go and have a shower and I would use a shower gel that I put Epsom salt in. I would bring a little toolkit of like energy clearing things. I might program an oil that has sandalwood and frankincense and myrrh in it. And I will set that intention that when it's over my field, that that is uh, protecting me. And I'm connecting in with the essence of the frankincense, the element and the planet it's connected to. So I'm using these tools in a different way for protection, radiance, whatever it might be. These, this is like the kitchen, which we're not necessarily needing mm -hmm. loads of different, you know, things. So it's really about experimenting and allowing your intuition to to guide you because um, there's so many things that when we start getting more sensitive if you're a channel or you're psychic, you'll realize that it, it, it will come to you. It'll be like knocking on the door. Something will come up. Someone will message, somebody will mention something. Yeah. Explore it. Begin to look at what does that flower mean? What's the spiritual meaning behind the flower? What might that flower be used like in, in witchcraft? How could that be used in a spiritual bath? Oh, it's to help heal the heart. Amazing. I'll create an Epsom salt bath with some oils and, and these flowers because on some level, that's what I need. And it's about just these subtleties and beginning to weave those energies and really play with it. It is playing. I love that. It really invites a greater level of creativity and really activates our inner knowingness of you know what is going to be the best for us at a particular moment in time whether it's a you know a salt bath or whether it's you know just really sitting down and connecting with our breath connecting with our heart center mm -hmm. you know activating our own pillar of light so mm -hmm. really really helpful tools i know that you work with a lot of you know conscious business owners um, entrepreneurs what I'm really curious to ask you is how you see that evolving and as we move forward in such a transformational time and also what emergence of sort of unique gifts and abilities do you feel like are really called for at this time? Yeah, I feel that there, there's different, I think there's going to be a lot of a clear out amongst the kind of coaching and spiritual communities because there's been a lot of shoulds that have been programmed in and we've got a lot of people that may have only been working at a mindset level and essentially they've maybe not done shadow work so because there's going to be so much coming through in the next year if you do not have the other uh, tools to support yourself through that evolution that will be something that could then mean you feel off kilter therefore it reflects in your business also how do you hold your client base that are going through changes be prepared to pivot. How agile are you? How agile is your business to be able to pivot? Yeah. Because the demands and needs of people that are making big radical belief changes and uh, values changes means that your offering that you have may not necessarily be uh, suitable in the way it was a year ago. You know, like, are you evolving and then bringing that wisdom and birthing that through, I call it your sole purpose vehicle. Are you allowing that change to be part of the journey that they get to experience as well? because people will need depth. One of the big things when people go through uh, rapid periods of growth, because they are reaching a point where something that is purpose-led, if, you, if you're not getting it where you are, you will have to start seeking elsewhere. Some of these problems that come about and challenges that happen for people, they make them draw outside the lines. So how are you connected at a relationship level with your, your communities, your email groups? It's not just all, you know, I love, you know, I'm big on the tech. That's amazing. But ultimately, I feel that we're going to have to be much more um, fluid. As people also open their hearts, the language that's used in much of the copy is not going to fly. Mm -hmm. It feels inauthentic. Um, and I had people reach out to me to try and come onto my podcast and you just know the language, it just does it, it turns me off. It's like really not good. So ultimately, if I can feel something is inauthentic, 
I'm naturally going to go where something feels in resonant frequency. So don't believe that the copy that is written on all your stuff, which may be amazing in January, might not be fitting in, in six months' time. It's about how are you allowing that frequency to emanate so that you are able to put smoke signals out to attract the aligned people as well. It's going to become much more energetic. We're going to get those that are going to go through rapid kind of um, downloading information that will be more on the intellectual because they're going to bring in technology and things like that. I don't think it's necessarily going to be such a big thing. I think, you know, corporations are still going to use similar jargon and language, etc. However, they are going to need to have a deeper dimension of awareness of trauma and emotional intelligence. And that is beginning to get woven into culture, you know, of organizations. And I feel that, you know, workplace wellness has been a bit of a box tick. You know, you get an app, go and do some yoga. It's kind of, it's, you know, we're going to have to see the volcano ultimately, where either people leave or there's going to be the stats speak for themselves. People are not being supported in the old way of doing business in those kind of corporations. Therefore, we do something about it or you lose really good talent and it costs more to recruit and get people in. So it's almost like we we can be proactive and we can be um, really feeding into what's about to kind of happen and what's happening for the people that we're connected in with. Um, or if people are stuck in their ego thinking this product works and it always has done and the funnel always works, it may not do in six months time because of the level of consciousness that is happening on this planet. We're not buying in the same way, just as people are not buying in the same way that they did in 2020. So yeah, being agile, I think also um, diverse. I've got um, people that had a, a physicist who had actually uh, I worked with her so that she could actually write her book because she'd left um, a cult essentially in her 50s and I did a lot of the healing work with her so that she was in a position to write that book we're going to get people that are going to be creators for change and how they've overcome things and also looking away from the fact of oh that's just you know Sarah that I work with in my team it's like who are we do we actually have that deeper connection with the people around us and I think that when we have a level of awareness we have a level of empathy perhaps and I think that's also needed so more people sharing their stories about experiences that they've overcome um, that being normalized that we actually get to share this stuff um, I feel also is going to break that barrier of people wearing masks so again I think there's this authenticity is going to look so unique for each individual it's not just getting up there on your soapbox and you know banging a drum about something I think it's about really like can you own like coming to the table and explaining, you know, maybe you, you've been diagnosed with ADHD and your, you know, your neurodiversity means that you need to work in a certain way. You know, perhaps using your voice to come into a workplace and not only ask for what you need, but then maybe how else, who else is affected? How else can I create change with what I'm going through? So rather than thinking micro, it's like, how can this affect others? And I think it's all of us. It's about all of us have something to step forward in, um, sharing our stories, linking up, my one of my communities that I was guided to build this year, I was shown this vision of, you know, I have um, lineage into like the ISIS temples. I have lineage in Atlantis. I've pulled all these different timelines and wisdom together in teams. We have many different people that hold all these other codes. And one of the things that I was shown is that we will be coming together to exchange some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it might be shown that I'll be needing to go to the Masai Mara tribe at some point. I've been shown, you know, there's certain places that I need to be going because I do grid work. So that becoming like normal that we're not all trying to run, you know, work the same lineage. We're not all trying to um, come from the same belief systems, but actually we activate something when we all come together in our diversity. So if that is in business and that's in our day to day lives and it's orchestrated as part of this next wave that we're going into, which is unity, which kind of means we have to be able to see you know, different belief systems and realize that we may have some connection to that ourselves somewhere along the line. And we begin to stop seeing so much of the separation by actually seeing a bit of the diversity and accepting it with them and us. So I think it's, it's going to be very, very exciting. And I think one of the key things is don't get into the trap of following what everyone else is doing, because that's going to put you on mute. Mm. You know, your unique value is the fact that you see things that others can't, or you're able to bring a different dimension of viewpoint because you're in different circles 
don't hide that don't feel that you need to put your little spiritual thing outside of everything and hide it your intuition is what's needed it sparks and activates others wherever you are yeah yeah how do you recommend that people lean into that uniqueness even more be surrounded by people or find people that have maybe done it and that are a bit of an activator uh because I feel that on some level that is a big block because they have this, I can't because they have this perception of what they think might happen. But when you're allowing your purpose and your soul to come through you so much, it actually, I used to get such pain in my heart. If I was not being authentic or speaking up, I actually get my heart feels like it's closing. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in the bank, this new male manager that came in, he was based in New York and I was in London. Um, and we had this big conference call um, and he was there introducing himself and he had this big presentation. And I was like, yes, this would be a great idea. And this would, and I basically shared it. And he said, how, how did you do that? And I said, do what? He said, you have literally gone through bullet points, everything I have on this, this page. How did you do that? He said, are you psychic? And the whole of my room laughed. And I said, well, I am actually. So I've obviously like tuned in and I channeled it. And he goes, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it was just allowing yourself to, you know, there was nothing, there was no planning. I was being myself. I was putting my hand up in my meeting and speaking up. And I think sometimes it's just like, what have I actually got to lose? Like what, you know, like there's an element of, you have to just know that if it's knocking at the door, then you have to just take that step. And then you take the next step and the next step. And realistically, if you're surrounded by a load of people that are judging you and persecuting you for being you, then you have that invitation to at least thank you for that information. Thank you for showing me who I'm surrounded by, because then I have the invitation to choose differently and perhaps use my feet and walk and find a new role and a new organization. You know, like we don't know that because we sit there and create stories in our heads of how we think things might go. There is no way I could have ever predicted or created that environment to let that guy know what I was like I mean there was just you know he was actually great like I, I, when he came over to London um we used to get in the car and go to all our client meetings and I'd be sitting there telling him about all these things that were happening that were a bit woo woo and for him he was actually more interested that it wasn't somebody trying to like you know fawn him and tell them how amazing they were I really just didn't care about that I was going to be myself and he was interested it was a mm. probably a bit more of a different diverse conversation with somebody and yes a bit eccentric but actually that's how you activate some of your energies by being yourself you know if we think all the stuff that we're healing from is because we we weren't listened to nobody saw us you know we didn't if we spoke we weren't appreciated so like where are you holding yourself back from being yourself in your adult experience as well because it's the same inner child wounds that are going to be triggered in your workplace if you're not speaking up and you're not allowing yourself to be a bit silly sometimes and you're not allowing that creativity to come through because you know that's where you're going to start seeing the contrast is through the triggers if you're not actually allowing yourself to be expressed so the more we allow people to you know my my team was quite eccentric all of us were quite diverse which was great because we weren't trying to correct each other um and i feel that more people like you know more places that allow that that will be part of the change so yeah i know i've probably taken quite a bit, a bit of a route on that one but yeah i think it's I a, uh... <laughs> love that 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 so deeply resonates and um yeah i i love that because it is taking a, a leap outside of our comfort zone to maybe share in a different way and being maybe surprised with how that's met and at least like really feeling that connection with yourself and your self-expression can be such a journey to become more and more comfortable expressing your authentic truth. And I feel it is like a muscle, like the more that you are able to do it, the more comfortable it becomes. Yeah. And I also, in retrospect now, some of the people, obviously, when I, I literally was just got on with it, I wasn't being any different in work or out of work. And I think some people like she's talking about energy, she's talking about soul, you know, she's cooked. And they're like, now she's laughing. We're the ones that are sat there. And she's the one that's actually created what she was going to do. She's helping all these people and it's working. And now it's mainstream to be talking about energy and soul. 
So mm. what happens if you're getting these amazing downloads, you're doing this work and you're being guided because that's what your soul is going to bring you forward to share and you're ignoring it, but actually it's the gift to the people around you, but it's also, it gives them permission to start to listen to their own inner guidance. It's, they understand your story. They see somebody that's connected and being themselves and it gives this ripple effect to others. So, you know, again, I hear the other stories of how people are now perceiving you know, what I've done and what I've moved on. And they're like, how do you do it? Because now people are like, how do I set the side hustle up? How do I, you know, write from the heart? How do I share? Because these are, we have lots of amazing skills, but often not the skills of authentically sharing from the heart. That's very different when you're writing. And a big piece of my work in the beginning was blog posts. So mm -hmm. that's very different to corporate writing, but it was like literally this information's coming through me and I have to share it. So trusting that is, um massive but that's all part of the growth is you know through our, our sole purpose vehicles we are going to grow in reflection to what we're being initiated through um and yet you can't gain confidence if you're not willing to take those first little steps and make mistakes and things will feel weird but you sometimes still have to do it anyway and just moving past that discomfort of newness outside the comfort zone if somebody is looking to maybe set up a side hustle or to, you know, turn their their gifts into a spiritual business, what maybe three tips um, of advice would you have? I would say, first off, make it so simple for yourself. I would start with something like click funnels or lead pages. Get it all in one place so that you have a system that you can easily change because you're going to be changing and you want to be able to go in and edit things and you want to be able to make it almost like a creative essence of you so that it's inviting people in because it's part of your kind of art really to a degree and if you can see it like that it becomes playful if you start copying everybody else you're going to get really caught up so see it as you wouldn't ask somebody, should I use a purple or yellow on my painting that I'm expressing? Pull interest, pull in the things that you're really interested in. 